Use the binomial table to calculate the following binomial probability. The probability that x is greater than or equal to 5 for n equals 9 and the probability or the probability of success 0 0.50. All right, so what we're going to do is use the binomial table here. That's what it says clearly, use the binomial table. And what I want to show you is a pattern that exists in the table. So the table, of course, um, it's not an intelligent thing, right? It's not a, a program, it's not a human being, so it can only do one type of calculation for us. Otherwise, you know, you'd have to have multiple tables to do, pro do multiple different kinds of problems. So we only have one table to work with, and that table works as follows. Basically, if you take any scenario, when, let's say when n is equal to 9, if you remember what the binomial probability distribution talks about, is it talks about the number of successes x, right? x equals the number of successes. So in this case, you know, if you have nine events, how many could be successes out of the nine? Well, if you think about it, you could have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or all nine of them be successful, right? You could have none of them be successful, just one of them be successful, all the way up to nine of them being successful. Now our problem asks for the probability that the number of successes is greater than or equal to five greater than or equal to. So equal to would include that. So we're basically talking about this chunk. Do you agree? That would be from 5 to 9. Those are all the values. And then there's this other portion here, the leftovers. One thing I know for sure is that if you added this part to this part, you have to get 1. You have to get 1. So how would you describe this? This is the probability that what? x is less than or equal to 4, right? If you want it, well, this isn't the probability, this is x is less than or equal to 4, but if I wanted to calculate the probability of x less than or equal to 4 and add that to the probability that x is greater than or equal to 5, what I end up with is the chance of 100% or the probability equal to 1. Now, why is that the case? Because this is all the possibilities, basically. Either the number of successes you have is 4 or less, or it's 5 or more. There's no other cases, right? There's no way you could be outside of either of these two sets, right? If you're not in this set, you have to be in that one. You can't be outside of both of the sets at the same time, right? You can be outside of this set, but that means you're in this one. You can be outside of this set, but that would mean you're in this one. So basically, if this is the probability that this set occurs plus the probability that that set occurs, it has to be equal to 100% of the probability, which is represented as a decimal, as one. The reason why this relationship is important is because my table, again, is not intelligent. It doesn't know what you want from it. It just answers one question only. If I go to the table and I were to look up 5, the way the table works is it would give me from 5 to 0 all the probability. It would give me the probability of 5 plus the probability of 4 plus the probability of 3, 2, 1, 0. Well, that's not what I want, right? I don't want part of this squared set and then all this stuff I don't want, right? So looking at 5 is not going to work. In other words, I can't get the, the table to do what I want, right? Because it only goes from the number you give it down. If I give it 8, it goes from 8 down, right? So there's no way I can get this box. If I give it 9, so I'll give it 9, it'll go all the way down to what? 0. So it's going to give me all the probability. It'll give me 1 as the answer. So the bottom line is, is the only way I can get the table to do what I want is to be clever about it. I can say, well, let's see. If I want this part, I can subtract this part from 1, right? It's just algebra, right? Subtract something from the left-hand side, I have to subtract it from the right-hand side. And when I do that, I get an expression. This cancels out. I end up with the probability that x is greater than or equal to 5 is equal to 1 minus this guy, the probability that x is less than or equal to 4. And so that becomes my answer. So what I actually have to do is when the problem says x is greater than or equal to 5, I've got to look up 4 on the table and then subtract the answer I get from the table from the number 1. So that's the key thing there. Remember, the table only goes from the number you give it down. So it answers less than or equal to problems for you, the table. It doesn't do less than problems. It doesn't do greater than or equal to problems. It doesn't do greater than. It only does less than, right? So that's all the, the table can do. OK, so this is my answer then. I have to go to my table, look up 4, right? So look up 4, look up p equals to 0.5, right? And of course, n is equal to 9. And when I do that, I'll subtract my answer from 1, and I'll have the solution for the problem. So let's go look at our table now to get these numbers that we need. So again, we're looking up 4, 50% for p, and n equals 9. 
is we're on the binomial table and we want to go to where it says n equals 9 so we're going to move it down a couple pages here so so there we have n equals 9 and we're looking for the probability to be 0.5 and we want our k value to be 4 so we need this value for in the 0.5 row and we get the answer 0 0.500 0 0.500 is so our table value is 0.5 for this probability. So this part was 0.5, so our answer becomes 1 minus 0 0.500, which of course is 0 0.500. So that's the solution for our problem. The probability that x is greater than or equal to 5 is 50%.